Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get into the hurricane forecast for this upcoming season. We're about three months away and I want to dive into early to kind of give you a look ahead at what's next. I always want you prepared for what's next. So let me show you the big change we're going to have. We're going to go from an El Nino to a La Nina very quickly. It's going to be actually a super quick transition. That's not great news for the hurricane season. And you see it here. I don't want to dive into this too much, but basically we've been in El Nino, but as we work our way into the next couple months, here we are in April, for example, you can see this going down that's a sign we're about to get into La Nina and we're going to have that right through the heart of the hurricane season. Here's what's going on in looking ahead. This is July into uh, August. This is a look at uh, some of the sea surface temperatures or at least uh, the changes in those. And you see right in here, look at that blue shading. We're going to be getting much, much cooler in parts, relatively speaking, in parts of the Eastern Pacific. That is a sign of La Nina. Now, La Nina typically means more hurricanes. And I do, I do believe that's what we're going to get. But let me dive into that even more so. Now, let me swing to the Atlantic Basin. So here we are in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean. We get into the Atlantic. This is also looking ahead. August into September and October, the peak of the hurricane season. Almost 90% of all hurricanes form in those three months, or at least all named systems in those three months. That's the heart of the hurricane season. In this outlook, this orange shading for almost the entire Atlantic basin is saying, hey, these water temperatures are going to be running above average and well above average. So we've got a couple of things going into a La Nina and very much above average temperatures. Now, a typical hurricane season, as we go forward, you, it starts June 1st. Usually it's pretty quiet. We may get a storm or two, even in April, maybe one in May and uh, June, but then it starts to really ramp up August, September, and October being the peak of the season, the peak itself right around September 10th or September 11th, and it typically stays active through October and then drops off. Although the last few Novembers, we've seen a little more action around. Unfortunately, right when things peak for this hurricane season, that's when we get into a La Nina. Now an El Nino season, usually that's better news for the hurricane season. With an El Nino pattern, a global pattern, with an El Nino pattern, that means a lot more in the way of wind shear and that means less hurricanes. Now, last year we had an El Nino uh, period, an El Nino cycle. So a lot of the forecasts are saying, hey, there's not going to be as many hurricanes. But this is just one ingredient. You can look back at my forecast I did for last season. I was saying it's going to be above average no matter what, because even though we had an El Nino, the water temperatures were so very warm. So it balanced it out and it did turn out to be that above average season. But typically, El Nino is better. That's better for us. I don't root for hurricanes. I don't, I don't want them. I do want some rain in spots. We need to get some rain in the beneficial aspects, but we don't need any destruction around. Now, uh, with an El Nino uh, pattern, that leads to more wind shear. When you have more wind shear, picture this. You have uh, thunderstorms building up in the Atlantic. If you have winds, if the storm's coming this way or the hurricane, winds are coming in the opposite direction. That's the wind shear, and it can knock apart the thunderstorms as they build up so they can't develop as much. But when we're dealing with a La Nina uh, period, which I'll show you, the thunderstorms can build up. There's not as much wind shear. We have more of those easterly uh, breezes, the easterly flow, which is where a lot of these storms are coming from. And that's why I do believe we're going to have more hurricanes because we are going to have less wind shear. But it, as I mentioned, it's not just, are we in El Nino or La Nina? There's a lot of other things, but I do believe uh, with less wind shear and on top of it, having the very warm water temperatures that I mentioned as we get into the heart of the hurricane season, that means we're going to have a much busier season than average. So there's multiple things, La Nina plus the water temperatures. Now, in an average season, typical season, at least over the last uh, 20 to 30 years or so, we get about 14 named storms, seven of those becoming hurricanes, and three of those becoming major hurricanes. That's category three or greater. Those are the ones that, of course, cause a lot of destruction. Of course, even a tropical storm, though, with the flooding can cause destruction. Every single storm is different, and that's why on this channel, I track it storm by storm for you. Now, you see these averages. I believe we're going to be closer to 20, maybe 25 named storms this season because the uh, conditions are conducive 
for more in the way of activity in the Atlantic Basin. So this season, we're going to be above average. We have La Nina, less wind shear. That usually means more storms. Sea surface temperatures are going to be warm to flat out hot. We've seen that over the last few seasons. That's why actually, even though we had El Nino last season, there were so many named storms because the water is so warm. So you have these two giant ingredients and that does mean a very active hurricane season. I expect over 20 named storms for this upcoming hurricane season. Now, with that said, you're going to see a lot of forecasts come out and they're gonna talk about, hey, the storms may hit here or they may, may hit here. Uh, please take those with a grain of salt. I don't wanna say they're not true, but they're really not that accurate. We don't know where, I don't know where a storm is going to really go until I get a feel of the uh, pattern, maybe like a two, three week pattern. So if you're hearing something that there's going to be a lot of hurricanes, which I do believe we're going to have the higher chance, it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get one in your island or you're going to get one in your country. We have to take it storm by storm. And typically a lot of the forecasts that tell you where the storms may go, they're picking obvious spots. Florida may have some more storms in the Gulf and the Caribbean. Yeah, that's typically where they go during a season. So that's not exactly uh, rocket science there. Now, the list on the name, I do believe we'll get down the list, but there could be a zillion named storms. If they stay over the open water, that's a good thing. Again, I don't know where they're going to go until I get a better handle on the pattern, and I'll track it storm by storm on this channel. But this is the list of names for the Atlantic Basin. Now, different areas around the world have different lists. The Eastern Pacific, for example, has a different list, but this here, the Atlantic Basin, so the Atlantic Ocean, Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, Alberto, Beryl, then Chris, then Debbie, Ernesto, Francine after that, and then Gordon, and then it continues to go on, Helene and Isaac, uh, Joyce, uh, Kirk, Leslie, Milton, uh, Nadine, and we go on and on. Now, hopefully, again, we don't get too far down the list, but I do believe it is going to be much more active. Again, we're going to get quickly into a La Nina, bad timing, heart of the hurricane season, and very warm temps. Now, I want to get back to the short-term forecast, keep you covered on everything. A couple big things going on. Big system moving into parts of the Pacific Northwest, Western U.S., and parts of Canada. That's going to be, bring some winds over 100 miles per hour in the higher terrain and a lot of snow. We're thinking of our friends there. And then you can see here another front. Now, most of these fronts are going to be to the north of the Caribbean. They'll clip us by, but we're still dealing with some of the Saharan dust and some of the low air quality out there. So in the short term, and I'll widen this out in just a second, short term spotty showers. They'll favor our northern sections, Puerto Rico, Antigua, Barbuda. We could see a hit or miss shower today. We have these old fronts that are moving away. So a spotty shower, but not too much. And with that, said, I've been watching the fire threat. Of course, we've had the fires ongoing in Guatemala. Yesterday, the scenes coming out of the Panhandle of Texas. Historic fires there. There is some moisture around. Hopefully, that I'll get into that in a second. Plays better for Texas today. But the wildfire season could be a little bit worse because we are running drier than average. Even tomorrow, this is our Friday, an isolated chance of a shower. And with most of the front staying to the north, that'll be the same thing as well on Saturday. So we are drier than average. What could lead to a worse wildfire season leading up to the upcoming hurricane season. Now, little moisture around parts of Texas. Hopefully we get some because those wildfires just devastating in spots. Again, parts of Texas down through Guatemala. Here's that front that's going to be moving by as we work our way into our Friday. Some of the rain tries to work closer to the southeast U.S. And of course, watching this rain and snow, especially in the higher terrain, incredibly dangerous stuff with those very strong winds. Now, as we get out into the weekend, you can see this front. Here's the Caribbean just kind of dives down into Florida with some spotty showers and storms and some rain working into the northeast U.S. and then watching the snow on the higher terrain here with that system that is pushing in. That'll move all the way back toward uh, parts of Colorado and then seeing some of the rain here east coast of the United States and up toward parts of Canada. So here's Canada in the northeast U.S. Get over toward Nova Scotia, uh, back toward uh, Connecticut. Now one system leaving Newfoundland as we go through the day today. Could see a little snow wrapping in on the back side of it and then going into tomorrow watching this next system moving in and then into our Saturday, mainly a rain event for parts of New England. Not all of us will see it, but mainly a rain event. And then as we work our way from Saturday into Sunday, this scraping across the Atlantic region of Canada uh, with that chance of some scattered rain showers as we work our way into the upcoming weekend. Now, Jamaica tomorrow, the rain chance will be up to about 40%. And as we get toward the Cayman Islands, 20 to 30%. So again, it's the isolated stuff. Trinidad and Tobago, a slightly higher chance, but still too low rain chance, 30%. 
20 to 30 percent chance in Barbados and again back through St. Lucia. So a passing shower possible today. Rain chance holding at 20 percent in Grenada. Watching out for the lower air quality. St. Vincent and the Grenadines still some of that dust around. Rain chance 20 to 30 percent in Martinique. We'll see that as well as we work our way from Dominica uh, right up through Guadeloupe. Rain chance tomorrow and Saturday in Guadeloupe at 30 percent. 30 percent chance for today in Antigua and Barbuda and a 30 percent chance for today St. Kitts Nevis and Montserrat. Rain chance stays isolated in Guilla and St. Bards and still just very isolated St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. Rain chance about 30 to 40 percent today in Puerto Rico. We'll have a few showers around. U.S. and British Virgin Islands a few showers around not as many as we had a few days ago. Dominican Republic, a 40% chance today. And as we work our way into Haiti, a 30% chance today, but mainly dry for tomorrow. Bahamas will be watching a front getting closer for tomorrow. Could see a few spotty showers. Turks and Caicos, rain chance limited, 10%. As we get back toward Cuba, scrape by a few showers, 20%. And about a 20 to 30% chance in Belize and back through the Yucatan of Mexico. Bumps up a little bit on Saturday. We work our way through Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, rain chance stays low, but a passing shower, that easterly breeze, uh, that will be with us. Watching out for the air quality. Bermuda, a few showers possible today. Otherwise, mainly dry in Costa Rica and Panama, where we need to get some rain. Rain chance stays limited. Watching the dust around over toward Guyana and Suriname. Rain chance very, very spotty and limited. About a 10 to 30% chance the next few days. In northern Venezuela, about a 20% chance. So again, looking ahead to the upcoming hurricane season, La Nina coming back quickly. That with the very warm water temperatures, that will mean a more active season, but this isn't to alarm anyone. Just want to get you prepared. And again, it doesn't mean something's going to come necessarily to you. It just means that we just need to watch out for these things together. It is going to be more active. Bigger fronts moving across the U.S. I was just highlighting that and watching that wildfire threat across the Caribbean, parts of Central America and the panhandle of Florida. And of course, monitoring any earthquakes out there, Thank you very much for being part of this channel, sharing this information and subscribing, being part of this weather community. Have a great rest of your day.